just talking about pizza? <laughs> they, they gave this to me at Grace Hopper. It's the one piece of swag I picked up. I'm going to go plug it into my computer. Um, please don't. <laughs> okay, so we've confirmed, uh, for those of you just joining us on the video, uh, white sauce pizza sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the internet forever. <laughs> okay, uh, so the uh, place where I started last Wednesday is the motivation for pipelining, right? Um, and I gave this laundry example. Okay. Um, pipelining was not invented by computer architects, and it was not invented uh, uh, for computer architecture. It was actually invented by Henry Ford. Um, and it was used in the design of automobiles. So he found a way to, rather than have a factory where everybody works on one car until that car is complete, and then you ship the car out and you start building the next car, that you could have many different cars in various stages of completion along the way. And as a result, you ended up with more cars coming out of your plant, and they came out faster. Okay? So, um, but we're talking about laundry. Okay? So laundry, um, let's say I have a situation where I have a washer and a dryer, okay, and then I fold. Okay. So uh, we will assume that we have um, fairly efficient machines. Let's say this takes 30 minutes. This takes 30 minutes. And this takes 30 minutes. Okay, so the latency of one load of laundry, right? One load takes how long? Yeah, 90 minutes. Okay. Good, right? So, what happens if I have four loads? Tell me. Okay, so 360, yeah. So 4 times 90 equals 360. Okay? But, right, there is a way to improve the performance here. Right? You probably have all done this. Marina, tell me what you're talking about. You put, it, you put one load in the washer, and then when that one's in the dryer, the next one in the washer. Yeah, okay? So we call those 30 minute intervals, we'll call them cycles. Cycle one, we put load one in the wash. Okay. Cycle two, we put load two in the wash, and we move load one into the dryer. All right. And then cycle three. So far, so good. Yeah. So. We're utilizing all of the resources in our laundry data path here simultaneously now, right? We have the washer, the dryer, and the folder are all actively doing something at this point. Okay, good. So, uh, four. Okay, so if we analyze this, now we see that um, we spent 30, 30, 30, right? So L1 took 90 minutes. In contrast to waiting to start all of them kind of from scratch, though, at now every cycle, we're going to have a load of laundry that comes out. And we can do this with infinite loads of laundry, so maybe we have enough detergent, right? So. How long does it take now to do four loads of laundry using this pipeline scheme? How many cycles does it take? Six. Yeah, one more. Right. This one's in 
the full stage of the sixth cycle, and it'll be done at the start of the seventh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so six complete cycles. Okay, that's fine. Six complete cycles. This takes. Um, 180 with pipelining. Okay, so if that's not motivation for why pipelining um, can go, just so you know, if you sit right there, you're going to be in the video. Can I be? Uh, you, you can be. Uh, I'd like to be. Okay. <laughs> just full disclosure. <laughs> you will be a YouTube sensation. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Okay, so um, without pipelining, 360 loads for minutes, not 360 loads, right? With pipelining, 180 minutes. Okay, so we can actually compute the the speed up. So 360 divided by 180 equals two. It is twice as fast to use pipelining. And this was Henry Ford's genius. He thought, gosh, you know. That guy really there, there is really good at installing windshields. And this other person is great at tuning engines. Why do I have them wasting time not doing the things that they're great at? Okay. Uh, and so the genius was, let people do what they're good at, and they can get it done fast, and then we'll just have them repeat that process over and over again, and we'll get a bunch more cars done. Okay, okay so a couple of variations on this, right? Let me change the problem just slightly. Okay. Let's say uh, I have downgraded my or upgraded my folder. That's going to take 20 minutes. Okay. And, and I've downgraded my dryer. This now takes 40 minutes. Okay. Total latency is the same. Still takes 90 minutes per load. Okay. How does it change my laundry? problem here though. What becomes the new amount of time required for the complete set of four loads to complete? Okay. So 30, 40, 40, 40, 40. Right? As long as there's anything in the dryer, we're waiting, we can't advance the system until the dryer is done. Michelle, do you believe me? Yeah, I believe you. Okay. So I'm waiting for you guys to give me an answer. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, the question is, if I change this to 40 and this to 20, how does that impact the amount of time it takes for me to do four complete loads? Three, two, ten. Yeah, that's the number I get. Because you have... Um, 40, 40, 40, 40, and then 20 and 30, right? Stop me if you, if you don't get it, okay? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, okay. So um, what this indicates, though, so um, 210 with dryer. So 210 is not as good as 180, right? And we haven't changed the latency of the system at all, right? It still takes just the same amount of time for each load to complete. But what this says is that we are governed, the pipeline efficiency is governed by the slowest stage in the pipeline. whether you're making cars or doing laundry or uh, executing instructions in an architecture, you want all of your stages to take approximately the same amount of time. 
That's important. Uh, as otherwise, you end up waiting for the slowest stage, right? This stage is twice as long as this one, so the benefits of having this be faster are gone. Any questions so far? Okay. So that's the motivation. Um, we can improve efficiency. We get higher throughput of completed units. Okay. In this case, it's laundry. Uh, but in the architectural world, what we're going to do is we're going to have um, instructions coming out of the pipeline every clock cycle. That's the intention. So the advantage is that we can um, shorten that clock cycle. Right? So in the single cycle world, wash, dry, fold, that whole thing was one cycle. Imagine that you had some magic little box where you put all your clothes in, dirty, and they came out wash, dried, and folded at the other end 90 minutes later. Don't get me wrong, I, I would buy one of those. Um, but um, the, uh, as a put, so that, that's what that is. It's a single black box that does everything, and before I can put the next load in, I have to wait until that box is finished. Now what we're, what we're saying is like let's separate those into separate functional units, right? And then we can have each of those functional units be utilized separately, operating on different items. Okay. So um, this lowers the clock cycle time. So in the case of the wash dry fold, we went from 90 minutes down to 30 in the first case or 40 in the second case. So a significant increase in speed of the clock. We have lower clock cycle time, have lower run time, improves performance. Can you explain why it lowers the CCT? Yes. The, um, magic box which does wash, dry, fold. Right? It takes 90 minutes to do that. Right? So our clock cycle time is 90 minutes. We um, between the time we put one set of laundry into the magic box to the time we can put the next set of laundry into the magic box, the whole cycle takes 90 minutes for different. If we break it out, if we do the pipeline, it equals 30 minutes. Because we can be putting a new load of laundry into the system okay, every cycle or every 30 minutes in this case. So that we only have to wait. For, this assumes that they're all the same speed. So in the case with the green up here, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, then we can advance the laundry through the system every 30 minutes. So we have a new load of laundry going in every 30 minutes, and we have a completed load of laundry coming out every 30 minutes. Good? So um, significant in, uh, improvement in clock cycle time. And uh, you can recall from the Runtime equation, direct impact, and, run, and uh, runtime. CPI times I times CCP. Okay, so all other things equal, this is a direct win. And in fact, uh, any modern general purpose microprocessor these days is going to be pipeline. Um, this is not new for pipelines, it's been around since about 1985. So they recognize the whole do more with less than uh, theory. Okay, so that's the motivation uh, for why we do this. This improves performance. There are some challenges. Okay. And at this point, the challenge is the laundry analogy kind of breaks down. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily have these um, challenges with laundry. I could make something up, like you have to do lights before you do darks or something. Probably less useful. Okay. So 
so what I'll start talking about now are some of the challenges that uh, pipelining introduces. Um, we have three components to the runtime equation. We have number of instructions, we have clock cycle time, and we have cycles per instruction. Okay. Pipelining doesn't directly impact the number of instructions, just like it doesn't impact the number of loads of laundry. You need to execute what you need to execute. Right? Um, so the only other thing that could change is cycles per instruction. We'd love that to be one, where at the end of each cycle, you're completing an instruction. We tend to ignore the amount of time that it uh, takes to fill the pipeline. Okay? And the reason is that, you know, whether that's five stages or eight stages, it's probably very small in the relative sense of a program requiring billions of instructions.